Hi, and welcome to Stressed, the podcast to develop your stress resilience. Being ambitious and successful while living a happy life is possible. Learn how you can better cope with stress in day-to-day -day situations by applying tools and techniques that work for you. My name is Julia Arndt, and I'm extremely grateful that you decided to check out my podcast today. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome back to Stressed, the podcast to develop your stress resilience. I am super excited that you are here today to listen to today's podcast episode, where I will talk about what to do when your environment doesn't support your new lifestyle choices. And this is a topic that I am hearing very often when I'm speaking to clients, and it has actually come up um, speaking to a person that I have met um, just recently. And she asked me this question the last time I caught up with her when I was on my travels in New York City. And I thought this question was really powerful and I really wanted to make sure to share a couple of tools with you today or a couple of thoughts that I think are so important to think about when you are starting to basically make choices in your life to live a better life, to live a less stressed life. And you are making choices that are different to the ones that you have made before. So for example, you are choosing to stay home instead of going out with your friends, or you are choosing to set boundaries at work and you are getting, you know, you're getting maybe in difficulty with co-workers. So whatever it is, I want to talk about this today because I think there's a couple of really important things that I want to share with you. Of course, as always, I want to share as much information and as many practical tips with you as I possibly can to help you really move from stress to empowered and into a more empowered lifestyle that you love. So As I said, so you might have started to make some changes in your life and you're making decisions to be less stressed and people might not understand this all the time. They resist you. They may even say something negative to you or um, you really wish that you want people to talk to talk and to walk with you this new walk that you have chosen and it pulls you back to be together with them. So I really want to speak today about what can you do when your environment doesn't support your new lifestyle choices or you're just running into challenges with that. And the very first thing that I want to share about this specific topic is that you are always the people that you surround yourself with, right? There is a quote that says, you are the average of the five people that you surround yourself with. And now you might be thinking, yeah, it's really difficult because um, I'm not really surrounding myself currently with people that are aware and mindful of being less stressed in their life and making specific choices. And sometimes it's difficult, right? Because it's our close friends or it's our family. Maybe it's your partner that has a different lifestyle than you have. And it might be really difficult for you to go this walk alone, right? Because it's scary and, um, and a lot more challenging if you don't have support. So first of all, I want to tell you that I am here for you um, and that I really, I really believe in you and I'm so excited, you know, that you've been listening to all of these podcast episodes and that you are continuing really to apply the different tools that you have been learning over the last couple of weeks and months and you're not alone. And I am the first person that surrounds you. You're, I'm the very first person out of your five because the person and the people that you surround yourself with doesn't always have to be a physical person. It can also be a a virtual person. It can be a person that um, is here, that is that is there for you in a different kind of capacity. It can be the people that you follow on Instagram. It can be the people that you listen to, like on this podcast. It can be the people that you read about. And it doesn't always have to be our physical, yeah, the physical presence of people. And at the same time, maybe it's a little motivation for you as well to start meeting other people and to tap into a network and a community of people that 
will help you to grow in that direction. And with that, I'm actually just thinking, feel free to come over to my Facebook account at Blue Mountain Mindfulness and start talking with the community there as well, right? Like they, these are all like-minded people that want to be better in their stress management. So it is really important that you that you surround yourself with this new information on a regular basis and also use that as a support system when when something has happened that you're not so happy about, when you need a reminder, when you need some motivation, when you need people just to listen to you, we are really there for you. So that is the first thing that I wanted to share with you. And very often we hear people say, maybe you might have heard that as well, right? People say to you, oh, oh you're being less stressed or you're doing all these different things. And they don't believe it. They think that we are just living in a really busy world, that we are constantly connected and that we can't change anything about this. There's another really powerful quote that I want to share with you at this point. And the quote goes a little bit like this. It's Don't quote me on it word by word, but it's something around like, if people say it can't be done, it's more a reflection of their own limitation, not yours. And that is so, I, I love this quote. So let me read it again to you. If people say it can't be done, it's a reflection of their own limitations, not yours yours. So if you hear people say, I can't do this and I can't do that, it's they say that because it's their own limitation. It's how they are thinking, but it doesn't mean that it applies to you. You always have a choice. You always have a choice to do something for yourself, to feel better, to, for example, choose to disconnect yourself from your devices once or twice a day, maybe for an hour in the morning and for an hour in the evening. It can be done. And I'm so proud of you for, for starting to implement these different things into your life. And if people tell you it can't be done, it is a limitation of their own thought process and not yours. And you know what is really important, especially when we are talking about family and partners as well, is that everyone grows at their own pace, right? We are sometimes... We, we really, especially when we're going through a transformational process on our own, we really want to have support. And we, of course, look for the support in our closest environment. We look at our partners of how they live their lives. We look at our families and we want their support. And sometimes we don't get it because, again, they might not be at the same growth stage as you are right now. And everyone grows at the end of the day at their own pace. And that can be sometimes really, really hard, right? Because maybe you are already a year or two years ahead of them and that brings also its own challenges with within the family or within your partnership. But you really have to stay focused on yourself and you can't expect others to change. Because when you are thinking about change, and that's always the easier thing to do, right? We are often expecting other people to change and there's it's a big stress factor as well we often think oh if only if they would change this thing or if only my colleagues wouldn't would start would stop sending me all of these invitations or these late night meetings or whatever it is then i could be better but you always have a choice and you can start making really tremendous changes in your life by walking i think they say by walking the walk not just talking the walk but by walking the walk and um and this is the same in stress management and when you want to create a wonderful beautiful life that you love so yeah so always if you if you get frustrated if you find yourself in a situation and you're thinking i would really love this person to just go on that same um, path with me on this on this personal development path you can wish that and obviously you can um, you can express that, but you cannot expect that. And you cannot say only if they do it, then I do it. It's always, of course, helpful and it's it's better, but it's not the same thing. And in my partnership, it's the same thing as well. Like I am probably a little bit further ahead with my own stress management. My partner has his own business as well and is going through very stressful periods of time. And he sometimes has stress management tools that I don't really approve of, but I, I can only tell him and I can only, you know, 
share with him what I think would be better. But at the end of the day, it's him who's choosing that. And he needs maybe a little bit longer and a little maybe some crazy eye-opening um, experiences to to then really make the right choices for himself. So it is always really, really, really important that you just stay on your own path because nobody can help you on that. It, it has to be you. And so, yeah, to, to be okay with really that scenario and with that experience is really important. And that might take a little bit of time and that's totally okay as well. So what I always think is that the most power is behind you when you show people how you can actually change and that change is possible and how much better you are and how much better you feel. And so often, I hear people say that so often, right? I, I even said that I say it a lot in my trainings as well when I'm talking about stress management. We always think we have no time for stress management and it's a limitation, right? Because we live nowadays in a world and in a society where we learn how to be busy all the time. We learn how to always want more and always strive for the next thing. And I don't say that it's bad that we do that. I think it's it's very human and that's all how we all grow. But sometimes we need to wonder and ask ourselves, what is it? What is the right thing to strive for? And how can I find the right balance between both? Because if you work yourself to the ground, <laughs> um, it's not going to help you in the long run because your body will get back to you on this for sure. And so, yeah, so it's really important that you stand in your power and your power might be little right now, but it is still a power. There is still a seed within you that has started to grow and I want you to stay in that power because it's the most powerful thing that when you show other people what you're capable of doing people will start listening and people will start looking at you because that is the best proof to give in order to yeah to move forward and hopefully get other people on the same path as you are. Because at the end of the day, really being confident is super contagious and the most powerful message that you can give people. And yeah, so when people pick up, um, well, that's what I wanted to say. If people pick up that you are not confident with your choices, that's when people start questioning oftentimes as well, right? Um, let me give you an example. For example, if you are thinking about a new role and you're talking to someone and you're already kind of insecure about about taking that role on or that new job on in the first place or if you're thinking about a specific choice in your life and you're not so sure and then you go in and you talk with people and you kind of reflect that back, they will reflect back that insecurity as well. But if you're walking in, if you're going in with a lot of confidence and confidence in yourself, confidence that you can do it, people will listen to you. I promise you that. And if people don't listen, if you think, oh, I actually think I'm confident and people still don't listen, well, then just continue and believe in that. Maybe your confidence is not super strong yet and sometimes our own sometimes unconscious, subconscious insecurities are still being reflected even though we might not be 100% aware of that. So st st um, start and keep building your own confidence, keep standing in your own power and people will notice that, especially your friends and your family and your partners. They want to just see you happy as well and if you show them that you are being better, they will pick up on that and they will love that and they will start maybe even listening to you of what you're doing differently. So that's really, really important. And finally, what I wanted to share with you as well is that it's also important that you communicate what you're going through. It's important that you make yourself vulnerable and that you show what has maybe not been going well in your life and what you have been struggling with. And if you start showing that you 
you know, that you have been maybe going through a difficult time and you start being vulnerable about that, people will listen and they will understand. I'm working a lot with my clients on setting boundaries, especially in the workplace. And I should, I will definitely do a podcast episode on that as well, because it's a really powerful topic and it's a topic in itself. <laughs> um, but really setting boundaries is a huge topic, obviously, in stress management, especially with your environment. And I always tell my clients, you need to be open with your environment. You need to be open with your manager. You need to be open with your teammates. You need to be open with your family and friends. Because if you are, if you are really transparent about why you're making certain choices, again, people will be more understanding. They will um, pick up on that vulnerability and they will understand. So vulnerability is super huge, super important in stress management, super important in personal development, in growing and in making sure that you're taking care of yourself. So yeah, so being vulnerable is super important. And I think that was mostly it on this topic today on how you can react and what you can do when your environment doesn't support your new lifestyle choices. And one last question that I thought might come up in your head now that you've been listening to this podcast episode is that what if your life doesn't support it? So not just your environment and the people, but what if you, for example, realize that your job is not the right thing for you? What if you realize that your location where you're cur currently living is not the right place for you? Because maybe you have started to try out these different tools and techniques and you're just hitting a plateau. You're hitting a certain limit and you're still not really happy with your life situation. So again, I think that's a little bit a topic in itself, but I think it's really important and it's important to have that realization. It's important to test it out and try. I don't want you to just say, oh, because of this kind of external factor or that external factor, I will never be able to work on my stress management. Like, for example, I, I was just in New York City and in my head I was like the first one or two days I was so overwhelmed by everything, the heat, the noise, the smells, the just hustle and bustle and the quickness of the city. And the first one or two days I was thinking to myself, oh my God, how can people live in New York City? How can I teach stress management in New York City? Because I'm feeling overwhelmed and I'm feeling so triggered and I'm feeling so stressed out from this place. And, you know, I could have just gone in there and I could have said, okay, like for the next week, I just can't do anything because the city is just crazy. <laughs> But I kind of took it back to me and I asked myself, what can I do? What can I do to change? What can I do to make me feel better? What can I do for myself? And that was really powerful because once I stepped into that choice, once I stepped into my own power and I decided I can still do my morning routine. Yes, maybe it's a little bit more difficult because I have all these different appointments, but I can still do it. Maybe I do a shorter version of it. Maybe I'm journaling later in the day or before going to bed, but I will find time for the things that are important to me because I know they have a strong and good effect on that. So always try it out first when you're having this realization that you might think oh it's something in the external world that is limiting my me to that and and get good at that get good at the things that that you want to bring into your life um and when you then still at some point find yourself wondering if it might be better or if you just choose that in the long run you need something different then that's okay too that's totally okay because not all of us are made for new york city not all of us are made for the tech industry not all of us um, are made for living in tahoe in the woods like there everybody is different everybody has their own preferences and that's why we can all exist together so so yeah that, so that's really important to note as well and if you are interested to really start making powerful changes in your life i can just highly talk about my new eight-week online coaching program called from stressed to empowered it launched this week it launched on July 17th and I am so proud of this program. I have received so much positive feedback about it and I am so excited to share this with you because so many people 
are talking about making changes in their lives. We are in a, we live in a world where we are constantly feeding our brains with information. We are listening to podcasts. We are reading books. We are really trying to get better. And that's obviously definitely one step of how we can achieve that. But on the other hand, we also need to come into action. We need to start doing and not just think. And that is what the eight-week online coaching program is there for. Because you will start making changes in your life. You will act actively work on this over eight weeks together with me. So you will basically receive a 30-minute video um, every week and then you have different exercises that you're going through in a beautiful workbook that I have put together for you. And you will also become part of the exclusive FSTE community on Facebook where you can exchange yourself with other participants. You can share things and I will be there in this community to exchange thoughts and coaching tips as well. I will be there for you. So if you are interested, I would love to come. I would love to have you and I would love if you would come over to my website um, bluemountainmindfulness.com forward slash courses and you can read a little bit more information about the course you can read the success stories of my beautiful participants of so many amazing individuals from tech from the tech world from the consulting work from different work backgrounds that have successfully completed the program and have made incredible changes in their life because they have decided to make a change they have really worked so hard and i i'm so i'm i feel like a mother <laughs> i feel so proud um to see what they have been able to do so so yeah so come on over and check it out if you're interested if you are ready to make changes in your life if you're ready to start if you're ready to step into your power and take action i would love you to come and join the fste program so with that said thank you so much for listening to today's podcast episode i am always so grateful that you are here that you are my community and you can always reach out to me either through my instagram account at blue mountain mindfulness or you can come to my youtube channel where i'm sharing more information with you where i'm sharing more tools and tips and techniques with you about how you can better manage stress and how you can really step into a more, more powerful life and the reason why i always say that is that one of the things that i have come to realize over the last months and years that i have grown in my stress management skills is that initially i thought oh i'm just going to apply i'm just going to journal or i'm just going to um, take more time for myself to manage my stress and to bring my energy back into a power state but what i have really understood is that we have to work on our triggers we have to work on what is why we are getting stressed in the first place what is that underlying factor that is bringing us um, make, making us upset and making us frustrated and angry over and over and over again because there are reasons why you feel that way and we will talk about this more and more in the podcast and again if you want to really if you are no coward and you want to start looking at these specific things come join me in my FSTE program anyway that's what I wanted to say um and yeah so thank you so much for listening to today's podcast episode i am super grateful that you are here i am excited to hear from you if you have any questions feel free to reach out and i wish you a wonderful week a wonderful rest of your day and i talk to you soon with gratitude julia if you